everybody and welcome to uh this fruitful trees live broadcast and i'm going to be doing some more broadcasts with some uh, some well-known uh fruit growers and they're going to continue to give us some uh, answer your questions and so on but tonight i wanted to get on and talk a little here and also answer questions you may have uh, i've been traveling a lot to a lot of different nurseries and personal places where people have been growing trees and something interesting happened a couple of weeks ago at the Rare Fruit Council uh, show, and I was uh, asking them about a particular tree. I was asking them about persimmons, and there's a tropical persimmon here in Florida, but then there's also a triumph persimmon. And I was hearing mis mixed reports that some people were saying that they're the same, and other people were saying they're not, they're different. So in the video, I asked one person, about this and i asked them specifically you know is the tropical persimmon and the triumph persimmon the same and he gave me a very detailed answer that they're not the same the differences in the history of it in a couple of minutes they gave me a great answer then i turned around and i spoke to another educated tropical fruit grower and i asked him if they were the same and in one word he said yes so as i'm going around and and, and meeting people and and filming uh a lot of different farms and nurseries. I'm getting some uh, very detailed answers, uh, but I'm also getting some answers from other people that have a difference of opinion in the questions I'm asking about the same topics. And so I want to answer some of your questions of, of my experience of not what I've grown, because I haven't been doing this along with a lot of other people, but of the people I met and the answers they've given me and what I've seen, because I went to some places uh, today I was filming at a place where they had the uh, one of the original grafted pickering trees, which I'm going to be uploading a video next week about that. I went to the house where uh, Silas Wood, the original Silas Wood sapodilla tree is, and I have friends in 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 I have friends in uh, California, and I spent a good amount of time there in, in many years ago, and I saw a lot of the fruit that they were growing there. And uh, I'm blessed to know these people, and I'd like to bring them here on the show uh for all of you to ask questions as well and 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 we could be here as a community and help answer each other's questions in the side chat feel free to post in the side chat if you know the answers to these and and and, and just that we would learn together and and try to figure this out together uh, i'm so excited about the the trees that i'm seeing and the place i'm going and the people i'm meeting and and my trees i get more excited about my trees uh every day i go out there just to see how they're doing and and i hopefully not make too many mistakes but learn from the mistakes uh that i'm making so uh, i'm just having a joy doing this so uh so there's some good questions here and i'm gonna have uh some people one of them is julian from laura farms will be coming on here uh, in a couple of weeks maybe next week uh, to answer questions and talk about specific topics. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, I'll see if he's available to now and if, if he wants to join us. Uh, so give me a moment why I just, uh, let's see. And if any of you know the questions or you want to get involved in the chat in the side chat, please do so. And if any of you have a, a, a farm in South Florida and you'd like me to come visit and film, uh document what you have growing so we can maybe visit there in the future and see just contact me and reach out to me so i'd love to go even if you're in southwest florida but i'm in southeast florida uh let's see okay i'm just emailing to see if they want to join us All right, so uh, and some of these questions, other people will be answered better than me. I do have a question here. Oh, let me see. I know somebody else who would be great to come on if they want to join us. Let's see here. I know some of the people that they know more about this than most people in the world. Uh, let's see. All right, let's see. All 
All right, I should have maybe texted them before here. Uh, so let me uh, post this link to my Facebook and see if anyone wants to join me there to come on here and then we will get started with uh, answering your questions here. All right, so let's do this here. And we're in an interesting time right now because people think that there's not a lot outside of mango season, but there is a lot of stuff uh, growing on outside mango season. Let's see. Let's see. All right. If you don't follow me on social media, I'm on Instagram and Facebook as well. YouTube, okay. All righty. All right, so uh, I can talk about my garden and my yard and what's growing on out here and what I've seen recently. And so, all right, so I got a question here from uh, Somebody that says, do you grow fig trees? If so, do you have a favorite kind? Uh, there are so many delicious figs and people have told me here in South Florida that they don't grow figs very successfully. I, uh, the first fig tree that I grew, uh, grew really nice was a black Turkish fig, not one of my favorite figs, but I didn't know much what I was doing. It grew really big, but it was in, just so many ants on it and it just wasn't, uh, the right situation and uh, I got rid of that one. But now I'm growing two types of figs. I think I'm growing a Celine and, and also uh, a black Turkish fig. And they're both doing really well. Uh, for South Florida, they're doing really well. I like California figs better. So be careful when you do get a fig tree. I went to a local nursery and I bought like five fig trees and I got a lot of figs that I'm growing in containers. Uh, the problem was with that, uh, so one of the figs needed a wasp to get ripe. And why are they selling that here in nurseries in South Florida? Because they'll never they'll never get figs on them. So you got to do your research and be careful. You want the common fig, not the figs with the wasp. All right. Uh, we have our friend here, uh, Snails and Garden. So maybe he can answer some questions. Uh, if anyone wants to join me on Zoom, as a matter of fact, let me, uh, let me post a link to Zoom link because uh, maybe some of you uh, want to share your stories or or show your trees and stuff and and things like that. Uh, so if anyone wants to join me here, if you know how to do that, we're on Zoom if you want to join live and you can give your feedback to some of these uh, questions. Uh, here we go. I'm going to post in the side chat uh, the, the Zoom link. And there you go. All right, uh, so uh, my friend from Snails and Garden says, uh, can't stay uh, for the chat, just saying, what's up? All right, uh, too bad he can't stay, but if anyone else wants to come in on there. So yes, figs, I do grow figs. Uh, figs grow better in pots. Uh, nematodes can destroy them. So you're better off if you're growing them out here to grow them in pots. But I do have two figs in the ground that are doing really well. And the ones in my pots, I have a few figs on there, but not too much. So snails in, in garden, uh, since he has a bunch of uh, fig varieties for sure, uh, and some do better than others uh, for different reasons. So uh, it is successful to grow figs here, uh, mostly in pots, I think is what people are doing. Uh, so what's my favorite variety of carambola, star fruit? My favorite variety is Kerry. Uh, I've tasted some others, but that's my favorite variety. I find it the sweetest. Uh, so that's the one I love. Uh, uh, what if fruit plants are infested with uh, gannets uh, in the soil? How do you get rid of them? And would that affect the root? Uh, that's a question that I'm not sure of. I would, I would uh, suppose you would uh, spray something under there. I don't know exactly what the best thing to be to spray would be. Uh, I know there's certain plants that you can plant that'll help uh, help with that and deter those things. So if anyone else has an answer to that, let us know. And uh, let's see. Somebody says, I have a Rolina that has been flowering for maybe two months. I can't get it to fruit. Any advice? 
I also have a Relita. It's never fruited before. Uh, and it's uh, it's been flowering, so I can't get it. My advice would be patience and to wait. That would be my advice. I don't know how old your tree is. How old is your Relita tree? And has it ever has it ever fruited before? Uh, let's see. Yes. Uh, I I don't know with the gnats for the which plants are infested with gnats. Okay, somebody says just, okay, so Essential Life says just started a food forest in South Florida trying to find dwarf coconut palms. Can you suggest where to buy some? Yes, I definitely can. Uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew Reese at What's Ripening in, on Facebook, he's in Southwest Florida, and uh, he has a source for the, the small coconuts. A lot of people say they sell small coconut trees, but when you go plant them you want to know for sure because i thought i had small coconut trees now let me tell you dwarf coconut trees will get tall but they'll they, just like all dwarf trees will get tall they just grow slower they're not like they don't stay small they just grow much slower i've seen dwarf coconut trees super tall uh, but the only place i know i know Lon, if you go on uh, facebook marketplaces place in lakahatchee that says they sell and they guarantee they're dwarfed I don't know about that, if they are or they're not. Uh, I was recently somewhere where they said, uh, I think it was uh, Laura Farms, and he said he has a, a couple of dwarf ones. I'm not sure where he got them, but I know he's trying to somehow propagate them, so I have them for sale. So if you're on the East Coast, I would say Laura Farms, uh, uh, laurafarmsmiami.com. If you're on the West Coast, uh, I would check with uh, Matthew Reese at What's Ripening, Florida. So, all right, all right, brother Julian's watching right now. If you want to come in on Skype, uh, Julian, and ask some of these questions, it's I know it's the last second thing, but I post a Zoom link there if you want. But if not, just sit back and relax and <clears throat> and uh, eat your healthy popcorn and enjoy the show. Okay, uh, so if you have any other questions, let us know. Uh, oh, there's Julian. Oh, so D's plants. Okay, that's a good way to answer them, Julian. Uh, D's plants. Uh, he says, so you can get, uh, where's these plants? So you can get uh, a small coconuts from these plants. Uh, so another question is, uh, Samoan and Fiji to offer the ones you want. So another question is from Stillbrook, is there any part of Florida that is very affordable and grows trees well while being able to go into town easily but not being too far out of town? Great, great. Uh, question. And yeah, I mean, places that are affordable, that all depends. I mean, you can still get pretty empty land in, in, in places uh, with, without a big house. It depends what you're looking for, really. Uh, so uh, there, there are parts of Florida, uh, for, uh, anywhere from Orlando south, you're going to be able to grow fruit trees. Even Orlando north, you're going to be able to grow fruit trees. I mean, if you go between uh, the border of Florida and, and Orlando, there's a lot of land out there, pretty inexpensive that you can get stuff, you can grow trees. However, the farther south you come, the more trees you're going to be able to grow, the more varieties and they're going to grow better. Uh, so, you know, that's something to consider. And you can get affordable land. Here's the thing about growing, folks, and this is important. You don't need 10 acres. I have a quarter acre lot with a lot with over a hundred trees. You don't need 10 acres to grow trees. So you got to decide what you're trying to grow trees for. You know, I am not a country boy. I don't want to live too far away from a local store. Uh, so I understand what you're saying, but you know, to grow trees, what's the goal of growing trees? Do you want to be, become a commercial farmer and have a hundred acres of, of land? Or are you looking to just have enough food for yourself? And with that, you don't need a big spot. And you can do this with a small amount. So, all right, uh, Julian said, and these plants in Cutter Bay. Okay, so Julian, the question was about, we had a question about custard apple. Do the leaves fall off in the winter time? Uh, do custard apples lose their leaves? So that's a question if you wanna answer that there in the side chat. And on the Kamito, the difference between satin leaf and, and, and kamito. 
I am stumped by the difference. Uh, so that's uh, two questions Julia can answer. Uh, and somebody asked in the meantime, they said, what do you recommend to grow? I've been looking to grow one more thing. I have avocados, bananas, guavas, mangoes, and pineapples and other stuff growing. <laughs> I don't know what other stuff you have, Forestry Lone Wolf. So I can't recommend, I don't know what else you have, but if you look in my yard, I try to be uh, have as many things as possible. Uh, so a lot of things that grow great here in South Florida, but I don't know what else you have, but I'm learning there are some things you don't need much of. Like I have way too many avocado trees. And, you know, my friend has a lot of avocado trees and they're starting to go to waste on the floor. So some things you, you, can't, you can't overdo, you know. So, so you, you know, you got to dig strategically. The place I was at today that I filmed in Jupiter, the guy thought everything out. He thought from the sun of, of what, and he grew it in rows and he thought the spacing and he thought uh, the varieties and everything. I mean, it's a really interesting video that I'm going to be posted here soon. But you want to think about your plants, you know, when you, when you do this. Uh, so, all right. Uh, so somebody says, not that much. So the custard apple won't lose that many of the leaves. Or star apple be a good container plant. Uh, every every fruit tree is going to be a good container plant for a certain amount of time. Eventually, they're going to have to be up potted and then eventually get in the ground. Uh, you can keep all trees small, but if you you know, and it depends how much fruit you want, you know. But I know star apple will grow really really big uh, if if it if uh, if you don't keep pruning it. So. And by the way, if you get a star apple, uh, you got to go check out Julian there at, 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 at laurafarmsmiami.com because he has the varieties of star apple like no one else. Most places you go and it's just like green and and purple. You're like, well, they have grafted. They're like, yeah, we have grafted green and grafted purple. If you didn't see my videos, get out to uh, uh, get out to Laura Farms and get some. Uh, of his varieties they're absolutely amazing so uh but all trees will fruit pretty much for a certain amount of time eventually they'll get bigger you got they're, they're more work but you know julian's saying they fruit for him in a pot down there uh so like it depends how much fruit you're looking to get uh yes uh Yeah, he he's the king of mame, star apple, and a bunch of other stuff. There he says, avocado milkshake. Hmm. Uh, so somebody says, in your last vid visit to Laura Farms, Julian touched on guava variety from Mexico. Do you or do you have any more information on this variety regarding the fruit? So we'll have to ask uh, Julian to see if he has uh, any information on that? Where can you get a persimmon tree? That is a hot question right now. Uh, I know that Julian said he's going to have them uh, in, in the spring, I believe. Uh, but a persimmon tree, you're going to have to look around. I know uh, at the recent Rare Fruit Council show, there was uh, they had about maybe six to ten of those, and they sold out almost immediately. I think I made a video right before that. And that was a, a big part of it. Uh, but if you want, if you are going to get a persimmon tree, though, you want to get it somewhere local and let it be a tropical persimmon or a triumph persimmon, one that'll grow here locally. Don't like get one from California or something and, and have them shipped here because those might not do good here. Uh, I've checked all the local nurseries and persimmon is one thing that everyone's out of right now. I don't know anyone who has persimmons at the moment. Um, uh, but, um, but, uh, definitely, uh, I know Laura Farms is working on them and we'll have them. And I know one or two other places that will have them in the near future. They don't have them now. And that's one thing I've learned is it's okay. People are going to propagate these trees. It's not like, you know, I used to get anxiety. Oh, am I, I'm not going to find this. I heard somebody was buying like a lot, a lot of the, 
Alano uh, Sapadias years ago. I'm like, I got to get him. I got to get him. I got three trees. Felt good and secure. And then all of a sudden they came available again. I'm like, wow. <laughs> so it's just a matter of time. They'll be available. People are doing that now with the butterscotch uh, uh, sapodillas, with the uh, jujubes, with persimmons. They think like, well, I'm never going to be able to get this. Within three to six months, everything will be available. And then they won't be for a while. And then it will be. So just uh, find a girl where you can trust and, and get them. Yeah. So I don't have any uh, experience with Volimbi fruit at all. Uh, yeah, but I know, uh, I know uh, Julian does at Laura Farms. Uh, how would the fibrous, the Miami South Sabanus, how fibrous is the Miami South up on a scale of one to 10? Uh, Julian can answer that. Uh, really, on black sapote, that's interesting. You can grow a llama here in South Florida. I believe Julian showed me some last time I was out there. And I know, I think Love Nursery is growing them as well. Citrus is a little challenge here in South Florida. My watermelons are doing great. Uh, well, the plants are, they grew great in the, in, in the summertime. Uh, so I have a bunch growing. We'll see how they do, but I'm really excited about uh, the watermelon. And uh, Julian says, Miami Sawasop is not fiberless. White Zapote. So somebody's asking a question, looking to buy a white Zapote. And I'm glad we're doing this live, this live, because a lot of people ask me where they can get trees. And I, I'm friends with all of the nurseries, and I know a lot of them. And uh, so Julian has, has the more varieties of any trees than anyone. A lot of people sell fruit trees, but he has the particular varieties. Like, I didn't even know there were more varieties to Black Zapote and Aki, and he has them. It's, like, amazing. So he made a video about the Campo, the Camp, Camp, Camp Bell, uh, White Zapote, and he says it's one of the best he's ever had, if not the best he's ever had. And, again, he's, he's, he's getting them ready. He'll have them in the spring. But that's his favorite one. I love White Zapote. I have, myself, four trees. It's one of my favorite fruits. I think I did a top 10 video, a top three fruits in my yard. And uh, white sapote came in second, I believe. Uh, so, uh, yeah, white sapote is delicious. I don't think you can go wrong with any of the white sapotes. But definitely, if you're new, you have a new yard and you're looking to plant one, I, I trust Julian Laura, uh, Laura's uh, uh, taste buds. And he will have this one available soon. So. Um, he's also going to graft Wampi soon, so that's great. What does it mean when the stems turn black on an avocado tree? Need a pot. Stems turn black on an avocado tree, need a pot. I don't understand the question. Turn black on an avocado tree, need a pot. Oh, maybe it's a question mark. Okay. Uh, let's go back. I don't want to miss any of these questions. Thank you all for being here. And I have some really, really cool videos that are coming up soon that they're ready to go. I already edited them. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, wow, two or three weeks for the Campbell uh, White Sapote. Two or three weeks. So when are those in season? Because I want to get down there and taste it and do a video on that. So uh, definitely let me know when they're in season. Uh, so. All right. Oh, the avocado is in a pot. Okay. It could be sunburned. Uh, it could be several different things going on there. What kind of avocado variety is it? 
I want to remind everybody to taste as many different fruits as you can get your hands on. Uh, and I know raw sapote is in a season right now. Uh, and Julian has them, uh, the trees and the fruit. So, uh, yes, let's do a video on Campbell for sure. And white sapote in general. Uh, so uh, somebody's making a trip here to Cluiston soon uh, to visit uh, Montura Gardens. I've read things about their trees. Any thought? I've read good things about their trees. Any thoughts? Where are you coming to uh, to go to Cluiston? Because Cluiston is about less than an hour from where I live, maybe an hour away from where I live, and there's a whole bunch of nurseries. So if you live in South Florida and you're going out there to check it out, that's wonderful. Tell them I say hello and let me know how it was. But if you are flying in from like another state to go visit nurseries, they're just maybe one of a handful of the ones I would check out. So where are you located and, and, and going out there? Uh, yes, of course, not all plants that do good indoors. Some do better outdoors, for sure. Uh, Take on the sermon cherry. A lot of the commercial ones aren't that great, uh, but there are some you could buy. Oh, there's one particular one, a black one that, that tastes pretty good. And I was in front of Walter Zill's house and he had a giant tree. And I liked it so much, I had to find out where and how, and I got a tree and put it in the front of my gate. It's a good tree to have in the front on the street. Not as many people are going to eat it but it is a great tree uh so yeah it's 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 not my first choice but definitely good for the street uh so question here now uh, i have several mango trees uh to try to keep them small do i prune them the same as other fruit trees like apples or peach trees so i don't know much about apples or peach trees but when it comes to uh, pruning your, your mango trees, you want to wait till or right after you pick them and you want to prune them. You could prune them usually up to um, maybe September. If it's an earlier variety, maybe even earlier, maybe August. It depends how early the mango is. But try to pr prune them uh, right after you pick them. Because if you prune them too late in the season, you're not going to get mangoes. And some mango trees are naturally small and dwarf trees, and some are naturally uh, growing much quicker. So the bigger trees, you're gonna have to work a lot harder to keep them pruned. And also it might affect the fruiting. The dwarf trees or the semi-dwarf trees, you can do uh, much easier to prune and keep small. Is ackee a fatty fruit? And how do you know when it's ready to eat? Also the taste of it. Yes, ackee is a, a fatty fruit, it's almost like an olive or an avocado. It's a fatty fruit. It's not a sweet fruit. There are two types of ackee. There's hard ackee and soft ackee in a variety wise. Uh, but both, you know, they're ready to eat at the same time because the fruit opens up. Uh, and then you'll see the seed with the fruit on it inside. You do not want to cut it open yourself. It's poison if you eat a fruit that you cut open yourself. Uh, it must open up by itself so it releases the poison toxins, gases, at the right time to make it safe for you to eat. Uh, it sounds quite quite uh, dangerous because uh, I wouldn't buy it from people that you don't know or your enemies, but uh, if you have a tree, you'll know when they're ripe. The fruit really clearly opens up. And it's, now a lot of people cook it. I like to eat it raw. I'm okay with that. Uh, but uh, a, a, it's, it, it's a good amount of work to get it cleaned and to get it. But, uh, but it's uh, let's see here but yeah but it's uh it's a it's a good fruit uh if you're willing to do the work for it so let's see uh other questions what's the best way to keep termites away from fruit trees uh Oh, in Panama. I don't know. Termites on fruit trees. I guess uh, there's a lot of different sprays out there. I try to uh, I try to keep things uh, on. Let's see here. 
I try to keep things uh, organic myself. Uh, so I guess depending what fruit it is might help. Uh, I know some other people spray stuff and that helps. Let's see. Uh, what are some, uh, what are the best tropical or su uh, semi-tropical trees for green greenhouses? Uh, tropical trees for greenhouse. Well, you can grow anything in a greenhouse. It depends where you are as well. I mean, the colder it gets, the more you're going to have to work to heat up the greenhouse. But I know people grow mango trees in, in, in New York. You know, it depends on the, uh, on the sophistication of the greenhouse. Uh, I, I do want to grow some apple trees in zone 4B, like uh, Granny Smith or Honeycrisp. I don't know the exact zone, but I know they, they love cold weather. So if you eat unripe ackee, uh, you can die. They are poisonous. Uh, a stomach ache, you'll be, you'll be blessed if, if all you end up with is a stomach ache. Don't mess around with that and don't test that out. Uh, it, it's definitely a serious thing. <clears throat> okay. Does root stock affect uh, the taste of the mango? Uh, from my experience, no. From my experience, uh, the root stock will not affect the taste, but it will have... Uh, it will have the uh, you know determine the type how the tree grows on top of it. If you have a, a better rootstock or a rootstock that's more well known to do better, the tree is going to produce better and everything's going to grow better. Uh, there are some rootstocks that just are poor rootstocks where the tree might not even make it. I was just reading a a post today by a mango man himself by uh, Richard Campbell. And he was saying that, you know, some people were experimenting or he's been experimenting with the last seven years and people are asking about using wild mango as rootstock to keep the trees dwarfed and it's not working. He doesn't recommend it and he stopped doing it because it's just, for me, his experience not working. So yes, rootstock does affect the, the rest of the mango growing in many ways, but not in taste wise from my experience. Uh, what are some great tasting and producing mangoes that might do well in 12B? Uh, as long as uh, I would like, uh, as long as uh, season as possible. Alex at Tropical Acres Farms, the best one that could answer about mangoes in different areas uh, and what might grow well in different areas. But for the most part, mangoes will grow in a Mediterranean climate to a degree. Um, but all mo uh, mostly in a tropical climate. And once you get into uh, frost and freezing temperatures, uh, the mangoes are going to be in jeopardy. It's going to be a lot of work to keep them to keep them okay. Uh, if you get more down into the tropics and deeper into the tropics, uh, there are some mangoes that will produce better than others. I would ask Alex at Tropical Acres uh, which one would be best. And there's always different factors when it comes to that. Okay, and uh, we're going to have Alex back on the show uh, soon as well to answer some of your mango questions. Uh, when is the best time to start fertilizing mango trees here in South Florida? Hold on, I'm just going to answer this. Okay. Uh, yeah, so as Julian says, mangoes don't like fertilizer too much. And you definitely want to be careful giving them things like nitrogen. And, and you don't want them, you want to be careful with fertilizer. I mean, they don't need too much, but it depends where you are as well. And it depends on the soil. And, and so on. But when they're off the tree would be the, the better time to, to give them anything if you're going to. Uh, yep. 
Yes, I'll do a follow-up on Bobby's farm for sure. Thank you all for the question. Uh, yes, is it true I'm raw vegan? Yes, I'm a raw vegan for almost 30 years, 27 years, raw vegan. That's why I love this. And, and my goal is I only eat fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds in its raw state. So I'm growing trees for the simple goal of, of my food. And it's not for me a, a, a hobby. It's, this is my, for my food. Uh, and I know some people grow up because they like the taste of the food, but this is the, what I live on. <laughs> Somebody says, I have a hard time uh, grafting trees. The jackfruit family is there. Any technique which suits them or any tips. I'm going to be doing a grafting, jackfruit grafting video soon with a fellow who's uh, going to come get some graft wood uh, from me. And when he goes to graft them, I'll, I'll try to film that and show you all. Uh, jackfruit's a little bit more tricky, I, I believe. Mangoes are pretty uh, simple. Avocados are simple. When you get into sour sap and mangoes, a little bit more uh, interesting. The next time I go to Laura Farms, maybe uh, Julian will show us how to do, uh, do graft those. Uh, yes, and yes, do your research and go to the, the tropical fruit boards and, and look at the YouTube videos and you'll learn a lot from there, everybody. Uh, let's see. A bayou. The best growing conditions. I know a fellow here that has a big, beautiful tree. My trees, okay. It takes a long time to get fruit on them. So somebody's asking about the Karen Michelle mango. Uh, they tried it this season is now their number one mango. I say that, I try a lot of mangoes and I always often say that I had the Karen Michelle uh, it, it wasn't my favorite. It was great. It was delicious, absolutely delicious. But I've tasted a bunch this season that I like more. But I would look at the, the characteristics of it and the growing of it and depending where you are to see if it's going to grow well where you're at and, and, and depending what else you might have. Okay, so... Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, don't, you don't have to go too crazy getting trees out of your environment. You know, grow what you know is, grows best there. Uh, Fruit trees grow all, all year. So you want to fertilize them at the right time, but there's not one answer for each tree. Let's see. Uh, thanks for all the questions, everyone here. Uh, so again, Julian's going to come on and do a, a Q&A and Alex is going to come on and do a Q&A and I'll have some other people as well. Uh, well, the breadfruit is the jackfruit family, correct? Yes, I believe it in, or is it the ackee family? I believe it's the jackfruit family, but they don't grow as good down here uh, as jackfruit does. Jackfruit grows great down here. Do raw vegans eat fermented foods? Yes. Do I like leeches? Yes, I love leeches. I don't have a tree though. Uh, I don't have a big space and they take up a lot of space. Kenneth Steele is one I am growing. Are you familiar with the variety known as Ar 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 or Aurora? It's Aurora, not I-R-U, Aurora. It's a very good one, the Aurora. I believe it's A-R-U-A, -A, I believe. Yes, I I'm excited. I'm gonna taste my first raw sapote soon, which is supposed to be even better than the, the Kenneth Steele. Uh, so that's really cool. So yes, everybody, uh, I thank you all for watching the videos and and commenting on them. And let me know what you want to see more videos about. Again, 
Uh, I did a bunch of videos today. I got a bunch coming up that I'm going to be making and I'm ready to go and upload them. I hope you're learning from the videos. Uh, a lot of, lot of cool stuff coming up. So uh, let's see. Dragon fruit is tropical for one, but also I don't like cactus. Okay. Does durian grow in South Florida? No, the tree will, but the fruit won't. It doesn't get hot enough. It doesn't get hot enough. Somebody says, I heard if you plant avocados near each other, they root graft. Is that a problem? Not a problem as long as you don't get the laurel wilt uh, beetle, which kills the tree and, and travels from root to root. So besides that, it's absolutely fine to grow them near each other. But if you get it in one tree and it travels from root to root, then it could be an issue. So you got to act quickly if you get it from one tree. Uh, the signs are very visible, so you can you can stop it before it continues, hopefully. Uh, but uh, it takes many, many, many years for the tree roots to start grafting together. So I wouldn't be concerned with that if you're, I mean, I'm talking like 10 to 20 years. Uh, on the same hand, when I'm planting my avocados, I have some that are next to each other, but I do like to put a tree in front of them, which will possibly help. Uh, them not get together like that and if it does get the laurel wilt it's only limited to one tree if somebody has a grove it might be a little bit different um, okay all righty so yes thank you thank you all for for being here and i i look so forward to meeting you all if you're in south florida as i do these lectures i'm meeting so many more people uh today was really cool because i went to go to one farm and the guy knew, the guy who had the pickering, one of the first original grafted pickerings uh, that he got, it was originally 25. And I went and I, I interviewed that guy, he had two of them. So of the first 25 pickerings, the grafted ones, they, they actually grafted them for this guy who said he wanted some, they were just a seedling. He has two of the 25 in the world and they're big and they're beautiful. And uh, I just can't wait to summon to go back and taste taste from those original trees. Uh, but yes, I have uh, two pickerins in my yard as well. Uh, I believe, yes. Yeah, so does Laura Farm sell a, a Cabeza mango tree? You'd have to check with him. And it's real easy to any nursery. You can just call them up, but check laurafarmsmiami.com. He has a list of all the mangoes that he has there for sale. And also Tropical Acres Farms. And dot com Alex has just about every mango you can name in the world. He has like over 300 varieties there. So one of those two will have it. So definitely check it, check it. And they do both mail, send in the mail. So, uh, so those rare, those rare mangoes, those are the two places you'll find them. All right. Let's do uh, like maybe three more questions and then we're going to have, uh, okay, Julian sold out of that. But we're going to have Julian come on soon. I've made a post and asking you all what topic would you like to see us speak about? Maybe we'll just do another general uh, Q&A with him because there's a lot of questions. Uh, but uh, we'll do it for a, another Thursday night uh, with uh, Julian. And I'll do another one with, with Alex and, and, and some other of the people that I meet as I go out there. If you all like that. If you have any other ideas for the cha uh, channel or anything you'd like me to film or do, let me know. Uh, right now, I'm doing a lot of tasting videos with different types of avocados, and uh, it's it's just, uh, I was at Laura Farms, and I did the improved Pollock, and it was out of this world, and every day, I'm tasting like it seems like a new variety of an avocado. Uh, today, I just tasted my first lamb Haas avocado, which was uh, really, really good. I tasted my first Catalina avocado uh, this year, and uh, or, or, or ever, just this month, a couple months ago. And I got a bunch more that people are sending me. I'm about to taste my first whole avocado. Uh, people are mailing me fruit. It's like, what a great thing. It's so cool. Uh, and if you want me to do a review on any of your fruit trees or your fruit, send it on over. I'll be happy to do a video on it. I'm going to get out to back down to Laura Farms and do something on Ross Sapote and whatever else we could and uh yeah it's very exciting very exciting uh 
Yes, somebody's saying, do you know of Excalibur Fruit Trees Nursery and any more nurseries in South Florida? There are a ton of nurseries here in South Florida. I live next to uh, the Excalibur one, but there are so many others and and so many others. And I, I talk about them often on my, on my site uh, and, and on the channel here. And I recommend if you're going to buy a tree, uh, check out all of the nurseries and see which tree uh, in your opinion, looks the best, especially if you live down here, you know, go and visit them, visit the people. I just don't like to buy a tree. I also like to get to know the people and the type of people they are before I, I get a tree from them because everyone might have the same tree, but I, I want to know who I'm supporting and, and what else they're able to do for me in terms of what they're going to have available in the future, not just a, a one-time deal and say goodbye. So I know like if they're willing to graft trees for me or They'll even listen to my opinions and suggestions. So do that. That's why I deal with a lot of the nurseries I deal with. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, I'll just name a few of the nurseries here you could look into. And if I excluded somebody from the list, it's only because I don't remember off the top of my head. But definitely uh, Laura Farms uh, is at laurafarmsmiami.com. They're in Homestead. Uh, you have Love Nursery here in West Palm Beach. You have Excalibur, like you said. You have Zane's World, you have Jack and the Beanstalk Nursery here uh, in, in Lockahatchee as well. You have Mike at Trees and More. You can find him on Facebook. Uh, he's a little bit more north of here. Uh, if you look for mangoes uh, and some uh, avocados, you have Alex at Tropical Acres Farms. You have Truly Tropical. Uh, she sells mangoes. Uh, that's in Del Rey. And there's... Uh, Hidden Acres, they sell mango trees there in Fort Lauderdale. There's a whole bunch of, uh, and in Homestead, there's a bunch of different uh, nurseries out there. So watch my channel because I have just about all these people on the show and uh, you can really see what they have and how they take care of their plants. And I like when somebody's grafting themselves, you know, so you and they, they, they're labeling really good. Uh, so I'm really careful to know like, well, who grafted that? And also, you know, how's your labeling and how's your reputation of, of mislabels and so on? Because I don't want to get surprised 10 years down the road with that. And then, you know, it depends what your goal is, because I know a fellow here named Leaf who sells stuff uh, out of his house and he's, he has a lot of knowledge. And uh, so since he doesn't have a big uh, high cost of a nursery commercial area, he can do it less less cheaper but you want to know where he's getting them as well so you talk to these people you get to learn these things and and uh, and that's that's how you do it you know you don't just try to buy something and 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 if you really love the trees love the trees right so uh but definitely go online if you're looking for people that mail trees laura farms miami they mail the fruit and the trees and i recommend tasting the fruit before you buy a tree so you know what you're getting and i definitely uh know that they're a wonderful nursery. I know Tropical Acres Farms, uh, they, they ship through the mail. Those are the only two that I know on a regular basis will ship through the mail uh, if, you, if you're looking through the mail. But if you're in town, go and visit them. Uh, yeah, no, there's a good amount of, of, uh, of course, most nurseries, if you just go and look for a nursery, will be mostly or, ornamental. But uh, and, and there's a difference between a flower shop that sells a fruit tree and a fruit tree nursery. There is a difference. Uh, so you definitely uh, want to know that difference. But in terms of variety of different fruits uh, of you can get and the personal experience with them, you're not going to find a better place than Julian at Laura Farms. Uh, I am really a big uh, uh, on, on varieties of different fruits. You don't just want like a mango, you want to know all about the varieties of mangoes. Same thing with avocados and these things. And uh, so that's where you're going to get the best variety uh, for sure. And, you know, you got to look at where your factory is and so on and, and, and just look at all of the options out there. So somebody's asking, what are the best labels to start selling plants? Okay, you know, I would, I would, there's different type of labels out there, but I would find your, your best nursery and see how they do it and what they're doing. Uh, uh, from the avocados that can grow in 8N Florida, 
what has the highest oil content? Uh, uh, the cold tolerant, uh, the cold tolerant avocados. If you go on, and I think on, on Laura Farms, they have a list of which ones are cold, cold tolerant. So you can go in there and check that out. Uh, I have uh, two types of dragon fruit, but they're not fruiting much. My neighbor has a ton of dragon fruit. Uh, yeah, I know there's different names of dragon fruits. I just go by red, pink, and white. <laughs> and uh, I like the, the, the red and the pink. I like the pink better than the red and the white. I like the red better than the white. But I know there's a whole bunch of different varieties. So that doesn't do much uh, for people. Uh, day avocado, somebody's saying is amazing. Unfortunately, my day avocado died, but I have more than enough avocados, so I'm going to rest with not getting more. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you can go to big box stores, and they sometimes have some good deals on some trees, but you really want to be careful what you're getting. Yes, uh, the seedling tree that I did for the jackfruit that I posted today this morning. Really interesting. Indeed, indeed. Uh, raw vegan video. I have over 5,000 raw vegan videos on my YouTube channel, Raw Life Health Show. Raw Life Health Show. So there's a ton of raw vegan videos on there. Yes. All right. Well, everybody, thank you. Thank you for joining us here tonight. Uh, and uh, we'll see if uh, Alex or, or Julian is available next Thursday for a, for a, a live Q&A here. Uh, get your questions. And remember, post all your questions below my videos. I do answer them. So when I put a video out, you can post a question below the videos. And uh, I have some really cool videos that I, I did today that I'm going to be getting out. And one's really cool I'll be doing soon, about three trees in one hole. And then uh, uh, one about that of Pickering, the original Pickering. And the guy, the guy's farm I visited today was really, really cool. He had a lot of great stuff. And I'm excited because there's so much, you know, fruits always coming and going, always coming and going. And very good, very good. All right. Yes, support uh, local family businesses. That's a great thing to do as well. Definitely, if you can do that. Uh, so if there's a little nursery and then there's a big box store, go to the nursery if you can. Uh, even if it's a little bit more money, go there because it's good to support local. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you. Uh, Yes, the Maria Black avocados are excellent and uh, Miguel avocados, they're just so great. I'm gonna make a video on all the avocados. This is just so many uh, excellent ones I've been trying lately, so. All right, have a blessed night, everybody. Keep growing and keep watching and please share the videos and let people know about the channel and thank you for that. Have a great night, everybody, and uh, keep growing.